Yes, please. Chief Justice, Justices, the British Columbia Humanist Association adopts the positions you've just heard from my friends Mr. Sobkin and Mr. Gleason. In my time, I'm going to address an organizational two-way right on the basis that this court rejects those submissions and finds that in certain circumstances, an organization can have a two-way right. Now, I note that many of the points I am going to be making are addressed more fully in Professor Chan's paper, which I commend to the court. Now, I say determining uh, an organizational claimant's purpose must drive the analysis as to which organizations can claim the right and the sort of conduct that's protected by it. And yesterday the court asked a number of times whose rights are engaged and I say in the context of an organizational claimant we, we go to the organizational purpose and, and that's a threshold issue that recognizes fundamental differences between an organizational and individual claimant. An organizational claimant is a construct of law. It has no beliefs of its own. Its existence is defined or enabled by legislation that can be repealed, replaced, or amended, as is the case here. An organization's function is often narrowly focused. It has a distinct purpose that is often defined by its constituting documents or enabling legislation, as is the case here. And organizations are often required by law to operate within that purpose. Uh, those documents, in the words of Professor Chan, set the boundaries of lawful action. Action outside of that may be ultra vires or subject to some sort of other remedy or, or censure. And I say the jurisprudence shows sort of two uh, flawed or incomplete approaches to addressing this, this fundamental threshold issue. And firstly is the acceptance of the organizational claimant's self-definition without going back to the constituting documents. Mr. Dixon took you there. Um, to find out whether the stated purpose aligns with the lawful purpose of the organization. And secondly, there's the conflation of the organization itself and the community that it purports to represent. The idea being that it can point to some community that, that it defines that it stands in as a proxy for that. And I say resting an organization's two-way right on the notion of a represented community leads to a number of important questions. How do we define the community? Who comprises it? Do its members all maintain the same religious beliefs and practices? What input or role did the community members have in the operation of the organization? Who defines the community's values? What if there's intra-membership disagreement, which is something Mr. Brown, uh, sorry, Justice Brown, I believe, mentioned yesterday? But most significantly, what entitles the organizational claimant to assert that it represents that particular community? And I come here back to organizational purpose, the rationale for representing a community is the belief that the members of the community, that their beliefs and practices align with the organizational purpose. So when an organization's conduct goes beyond its lawful purpose, there's no longer any basis to believe the community is represented. So as I've mentioned, the best way to determine organizational purpose is with reference to the constituting and enabling documents. And if we ignore those documents, we risk turning an organizational to a right into what I call protected religious oligarchy. We move from protecting the communal aspect of freedom of religion for individuals into protecting the whims or beliefs or practices of some board or a council that operate the organization, or perhaps only the majority of that board who make this decision. And that's not what the two-way right is about. If we're talking about a communal right here, we have to be concerned with the community that the organization purports to represent not merely what those who, who deal with the operation of the organization, some small group of people, decide they're going to do. So if an organization operates beyond its purpose, whether that's determined by enabling legislation or constituting documents, it loses the authority to purport to represent that community anymore. Now it's standing up in its own right. And I adopt my friend's submissions that an organization, certainly in that circumstances, can't have the right. So a proper analysis and understanding of organizational purpose is a critical threshold issue that can't be overlooked. The two-way right must be founded in the purpose that is set out in the organization's constituting or enabling documents, not aspirational statements promulgated by a board or council, not mission statements, and not codes of conduct. Subject to questions, those are my submissions. Thank you.